What else says I'm live? I don't know about the connection this evening. Uh, last time, I think I tried to do a Wednesday evening live chat. It did not go well. So uh, let's do a sound check. Can you guys hear me? There's only two people in the room right now. Maybe I'll wait for a few more. You guys do me a favor on your on your way in, hit that thumbs up button. So can you guys hear me? I did remember to unplug my mic this time, so uh, hopefully there won't be a problem. Willard, how are you? What's up, Stacy? How you doing, Willard? What's new and interesting? I've got a little bit of news, which I'm going to get to, and I'll be really dispersed uh, shortly after I... Uh... That's good to hear, Willard. Willard, where do you live? I don't know if I've, if you told me I've forgotten because I'm old. Georgia. What's new, what's new, new and interesting in Georgia, Willard? Hello, Bouncer. You know, good old Bouncer. He's figured out how to... We we haven't put the metal roofing on the frame that Tatai built out there for Marcel's new uh, <clears throat> kitchen. And Bouncer has figured out to climb up it, get up onto the roof deck, and then come down the stairs. And uh, since there's really no way to keep him out anymore, uh, we just let him come in. He figured it out. He's uh, If he's not too much of a pest, I let him stay in the room. Huh, Bouncer? You gonna say hi to everyone, huh? Oh, what's up, buddy? Oh, you a good cat. Pretty good. He likes that neck scratching. <laughs> uh, how you doing, Van? Are you on number nine today? It's and cold. It don't ever get cold in Georgia. What are you talking about, Willard? Charles Huxted, thank you for joining us. I know it's cold where Charles is because it's always cold up there. All right, Bouncer, you got your scratching and your petting. That's about all we're good for tonight. You can sit there and hang out, though. Anything under 80 is wintertime. Well, Stacy does like it warm and toasty. And Turner, four Jack and Coke, three liters red horse. I thought I thought you were 100% red horse unless it was a 
a supply issue, man. North Georgia cold. Oh yeah. So what borders Georgia to the north? Tennessee? The Carolinas? Charles, almost no winter this year. No plowing required. Willard both. You're trying to give me my uh, geography lesson from the fifth grade. I think it's Tennessee, South Carolina. I think Alabama's to the west, yeah? And Turner, uh, got to enjoy Jack during the elections. So you're, you're kind of, uh, you're not solely on the red horse now. Well, it was 26 yesterday morning. And I, I don't ever remember having it in my head that it ever froze in Georgia. But obviously, if it was 26, uh, where were you? USA Forever. Uh, glad to see you're looking very, you're looking very well. Well, thank you. What do you think about her? Hmm? Mark P. Good evening, morning. I have some news shortly, Mark, that I'm going to drop on everyone, uh, of which you will be very pleased. Chef 1349, there have been major ice storms in Atlanta. Go figure. I don't think there's been a major ice storm in the Philippines for 15,000 years. Whenever the last ice age was, and maybe not even then. And Turner, Stacy, was that your cousin's house that I sent you the picture of Stacy? What the hell are you talking about, man? You ain't making no sense, boy. We're passing blizzard in 93 here at three feet of snow. Mark P, no more commercials. I have YouTube premium now. Oh. Well, then you probably won't care what I'm going to say shortly. I don't know how many of you have had the chance to watch that video I just uh, posted uh, only like 15, 20 minutes ago on the uh, garden and the watering and all that stuff. Uh, I wouldn't have, you know, I wouldn't have had the idea to, to do it how we ended up doing it. I, when I watered the garden, I just used the water hose. But thought I had another plan. And turn her LOL too, too late, Mark. So Van, what's new in your neck of the woods? You know, after that initial bump, 
and like 10 more people come in nobody hit the thumbs up must be a, a, a troll uh, barrage we're getting here I got a little baby gecko going up the wall So guys, this is probably going to be my last um, Wednesday live stream. You know, I'm not 100% sure yet, but probably. I mean, it's always it's always a pain in the ass, internet-wise here, and it seems like Wednesday evenings were particularly poor. Um, I did a speed check before I started tonight, and it wasn't too bad, but it wasn't too great either. So hopefully there's no buffering and messing around. I don't know, Brian, it was a picture of a mobile home getting pulled through a rich neighborhood, people yelling at them, uh, how redneck. Easy. And then don't let the cat out of the bag. Jeffy will call them. I don't know. I think I think the dimwit's dead. I know Bill said that, or someone had said that they had checked the obituaries, but um, I think the old fool's dead. I guess I could do a poll. Forget how to do it now. There we go. I know how Stacy's going to vote. He can't, couldn't bring himself to bear it if it were true. Stacy'd be hating life for sure. And Turner Bryan is under seventy here tonight. You know, we had like a, I don't know, like a. A micro micro burst here about five o'clock. And it was just a you know, just a little pickup in breeze and it tried to rain for about thirty seconds and then quit. Um uh, but I was looking at the satellite yesterday and today, uh, because yesterday I you know I did the irrigation and I was just looking to see if there was anything out there in the Pacific that would have uh, discouraged me from watering and there wasn't. Uh, but I I, uh, I looked at the uh, satellite this morning and there was something uh, coming in from the uh, Northeast. Uh, David, please explain how one can go and live in a foreign land with no income or wealth. Well, uh, there's about 7,000 videos to uh, explain just how I did that. Now, the wealth part of it. You know, I had a I had a sizable nest egg when I showed up, and then I went I went <coughs> I went back and worked for 
<clears throat> excuse me, I went back and worked for another six months and fluffed it out a little bit more. But my overall initial investment here was about a hundred thousand US dollars. And you know, by Western standards, that's not wealthy. Um, by Filipino standards, that makes you rich some bitch. Um, you know, we Marcel and, and I bought this property, uh, built a house, built the piggery. Uh, and the piggery was a lot more expensive than what you would have thought. Uh, we stocked the piggery and fed all those pigs. You know, it, talk, it takes, just say, now it would probably be something like 15,000 pesos, but probably at the time it was about, just say it was 10,000 pesos, $200 uh, to raise a, a, a piglet up into a, a gilt. A, uh, a guilt being a sow that hasn't given birth yet. Uh, and you multiply that times 50. So uh, that's 10,000 US dollars right there just for the pigs, let alone the labor we paid, the buildings, uh, all that other stuff. Um, and, you know, day to day living expenses were provided by YouTube. Um, Stacy, say hi to the troll. Thumbs up, trolls. Yeah, you trolls hit the thumbs up too. Van Turner, damn, just saw an ad. Uh, I looked at Casino Obit and saw nothing. Well, you know, I, I hear you, Van, but. There's no, uh, there's no guarantee. Look, who knows if he had his little operation or not? Um, who knows? Uh, but he, if he did, and he had complications that couldn't be handled in that little local Hick Town hospital, they might have transferred him somewhere else. Uh, if it, if he needed some uh, more sophisticated care, let's say, and uh, he died at that other hospital, and since no one cares, uh, no one notified the uh, the local newspaper if they even have such a thing anymore in rural Australia. Uh, happy low homestead. Good evening to you as well. Uh, Jeff, yeah, I looked up, uh, New South Wales death notices also. Well, the New South Wales ones would probably be pretty comprehensive, but again, um, I'm sure if it was in the Dimwitz case, the hospital themselves would have to, uh, notify the paper because nobody in his circle in his life uh, gives a crap one way or the other. Um, and in his ex-wife's case, she's probably, if he kicked the bucket, she's probably too busy uh, partying to drop a line to the local newspaper. Uh, Van Turner, I, th I think he is, I think he is because YouTube is to him like heroin is to a junkie. Yeah. I mean, come on. How many times did he say he was going to, he was done, he was quitting YouTube, he was finished with it, he was over with it. And sometimes within an hour he was back. And I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it was the longest that he was ever gone it was three or four days. So it's been, I don't know, how long has it been now? Uh, because I, I don't think that last video that he posted was real. Um, because, again, no follow-up. I think that was put up by uh, Gary Allen. That's why the title was wrong in the beginning. Um, and I think Gary Allen just posted. 
Um, Stacy Dixon, I miss the dimwit. Need laughter. Well, I I don't know who else to point you to. Uh, he was one of a kind. I mean, you know, I, <laughs> you guys really haven't ever heard me a, a real full-on belly laugh. Uh, but Marcel and I, in particular, I would, um, you know, Bill, well, Bill and Stacy and Gary were always great uh, to put up little snippets of his videos. And so then I would go and watch it. And I'd say, hey, Marcel, Marcel, come on, come look at this. And we would just laugh our asses off at that old fool. Um, because when you're, you know, when you're in it and you know it's BS, but someone is so serious about it, it's just, it's hilarious. Where are we at here? Um, Stacy, I'm going to Van Turner. Brian, how can an idiot figure out getting on the net? Well, uh, the Dimwit figured it out. I don't know what you mean, Van. Happy little homestead. My Baggio beans and potatoes growing good now. So your potato vines are all nice and and tall and lush and green. And Turner, he do a. Uh, yeah, what was that? K Kikorian? I don't know. You know, either he went in and he had the operation and he's so sick still that he can't uh, make a video. Uh, that's that's probably the most plausible explanation. Number two would be that he's just dead. And uh, number three, and this is like way down on the list, uh, is that he really was just fed up with YouTube. And, you know, if I was a dimwit, I'd be pretty fed up, too. I mean, Bill, everyone, but Bill in particular, that last time when Bill went on his live stream, uh, really hurt his feelings. David, it just appears that you spend a lot of time chasing $1,000. Shouldn't it be easier to work in the U.S. for six months? Uh, off and on <clears throat> well yeah it would be um but i left the u.s because it's a shithole it is and just about anyone who lives there will confirm that the united states is a shithole and um you know i left for a lot of reasons but i don't want to go back other than visiting family i got no reason to go back to the states um you know, rampant crime, full of blue-haired freaks. It's just, you know, no. Uh, I, I could give a shit. I'm not going back to the United States. And, you know, I, if I, so if I did go back and forth every six months or so, just to say, um, I've got a wife and a son here. Uh, I, I went down that road before, uh, raising my own children. So many, because, you know, because of, because I was an ice cream man, um, now it, it was a double-edged sword. So there were, in the winter time, there were a lot of, uh, weekends that I got to, to spend with the kids, but summertime is when it all happens, right? And, you know, I can remember not being able to do stuff with him uh, in the summer, take him to the park, go to games, um, 
just all that stuff that you do with your kids because I was working. And uh, I'm not going to do that again. So that's just as far as that. That's it. I'm not going to. Uh, ben Turner. I don't know. Eileen, maybe he, maybe you mean Eileen, uh, signed him up while he was drunk. Well, it could be any time. Uh, David, we love your channel, long-time watchers. Well, well, thank you for that, David. But yeah, I'm not going back to the U.S. And look, you know, at, at my age, what would I do? Be a greeter at Walmart? Um, I'm, I'm too, I'm too broken down to work in the trades anymore. You know, I was a carpenter, uh, set tile. Um, I, I can't, I can't do that stuff anymore. Not, not, not to a level to where, uh, a, an employer would expect me to work and that I would be, you know, I, Say I got a job as a carpenter. Well, I'd feel guilty because I was ripping them off because I'm only good for two or three hours a day working like a man. Uh, the rest of the time, I'm working like a really old man with bad knees and a bad back. Um, so, you know, and, uh, you know, the ice cream trucks were going out of fashion, let's say, even by the 90s. And I kept it up another 20 years after that. Uh, I had a brother who was doing it when I left, and COVID just uh, shut all that down. I, 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 he's not doing it anymore. Of course, he's older than I am, so you know, piss on it. Um, so what would I do? Uh, uh, Thomas Leary, uh, what will uh, Dimwit? What will Dimwit do once he dies? Uh, burn in hell would be my guess. Uh, Thomas Leary lies. <laughs> uh, that's, that, that's a good one. Wild Bill. I was just talking about you a minute ago. Um, hi, Brian. Family and fellow mongs. Thank you for joining in. Um, Jeff, that's kind of what I do, David, uh, three months in the, uh, Philippines, nine in the States will eventually, uh, be the other way around. Well, yeah, I, I, you know, I hear what you're saying, Jeff, but, uh, now. Let me say foreigner, uh. No one needs his type of ignorance. Well, yeah. You know, I've said it before. I'll say it again. Uh, the world will be a better place uh, if and when uh, the dimwit quits wasting everyone else's oxygen. Um, Stacy, there is nobody else to laugh at. Well, there are other people to laugh at. They're just not nearly so funny as the dimwit was. I say forever. All I can see is a little fish there. Wild Bill, uh, only quick visit uh, while I'll wait for a client to turn up. Uh, but I do have footage of the Dimwits visit to the hospital to upload later. Ah, okay. So uh, where did you get that, Bill? Uh, Brian, the get on the net comment was uh, aimed at the troll. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, post it quick. I'm going to I'm going to bed in about an hour. 
uh, Stacy, America has went nuts, really. Yeah, I mean, it was bad when I was there seven years ago. Almost, how long has it been? I'd have to look at my passport because it's not something I really keep, keep track of. I think I've been here six years. Um, and it was bad when I left. When, <laughs> you know, we feel... I, we fueled up, fueled up our ice cream trucks uh, at an Arco AMPM Mini Mart. Arco is Atlantic Rich Fuel Company, BP bottom out. They always had the cheapest gas, and it was decent enough gas. It wasn't that E86 or whatever the hell it was. It was just always the cheapest gas in town. So that's where we fueled, and I, and I feel, I fueled at that station for more than 20 years. And uh, this was the last summer that I was working. And um, they had been uh, remodeling the bathrooms. And uh, you always had to get a key on a brick. It wasn't on a brick. It was on a big plastic uh, cardboard thing. And uh, I, so I had to take a leak. So I went and asked for the key. Uh, the restaurant gave me the key. Uh, I went back and I looked up at the door, and it's got the it's got a picture of a man and a woman on it. Well, maybe they screwed something up. So I turned around to the other bathroom because there was two bathrooms, and it had a picture of a man and a woman on it. Well, what the hell? So I, I, you know, you look around the corner, and the register's like. I don't know, maybe 25 feet at the other end of the store. And I, I yelled back up, which, which one's the men's room? Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, they're unisex now. And at that very instant, I knew uh, without a doubt, absolutely 110% that I was making the right, the right decision to get the hell out of the United States. And and just incredibly thankful that my three daughters were already adults by that time. And I didn't have to worry and sweat that they would be in a bathroom somewhere uh, and uh, some man would uh, walk in on them uh, just because he could. Um... Van Turner, Brian, he pulled a uh, Kaborkian. That's that's how. Yeah, uh, at uh, Ellen's request. Well, we can only hope, right? I'm going to print the name in, Stacy Van Turner. <laughs> the doctor put him out. I, Van, I could get a job as a beer tester. Oh, there's lots of jobs I could probably get. I could, I could taste test Taco Bell and McDonald's. And, uh, I'd be a good food critic. Kahipana, good evening to you as well. Pam, it's been a long time. Uh, young people, Brian, uh, call that work-life balance. Uh, good for you. Yeah, work-life balance. <laughs> well, my work and my life is not going to involve uh, 12 and 13 hour plane rides. And Turner, Brian, Bill can't give out his confidential sources. Yeah. Um, has anyone seen Tony? Because I've got my suspicions that could be one of his uh, confidential sources. Paul T., hello to you as well. Thank you for joining me. Uh, thank you for joining us. Stacy, uh, just stay in the Philippines, uh, not missing nothing here. 
yeah, I, you know, it's not just the big cities anymore. Um, the fentanyl is just, you know, because the southern border is basically open. Um, so much fentanyl coming in. I don't know, what was it, 100,000 people last year died from fentanyl overdose? Uh, 100,000 people died. How many are actually hooked on it and wasting, just wasting their lives? Um, yeah, and I don't know how people act uh, on fentanyl. Uh, you know, the, the, the brain fryer of choice when I was familiar with it was crack. Uh, it made them, you know, uh, bad enough. I, I just, you know, if 100,000 people die, what is there? One, two, three, four, five million people that use it on a regular basis? It's just, uh, and, and no one cares. Um, no one who could do anything about it cares. Um, it's sad. Pam Hiltz, uh, this is way off topic. But I asked this before, but the, connect, the connection was lost. The squash you were harvesting were those acorn squash that grew big. No, they look kind of like they look kind of like acorn squash. I at one time I knew the uh, the actual scientific name for them. Um, they're they're just an Asian squash. In appearance, they look kind of like a, a cross between a pumpkin. You know, pumpkins are squash. Uh, jack o' lanterns, pumpkin pie, that's squash. And acorn squash look like a, a really big acorn. They're kind of apple shaped with Klingon uh, brow ridges on it. And these are, uh, these squash are similar to us, but they're not acorn squash. Um, the taste is somewhat, um, they have an orange flesh. So um, the inward appearance is a bit similar as well. I got I to gotta admit, I never ate enough acorn squash in my life to remember what they tasted like. Um, I was more of a zucchini yellow crookneck squash guy um so i can't compare the flavors uh, but we we eat quite a bit of it in fact marcel made tonight she made um mung beans uh, mongo beans those little small uh beans they're green Taste kind of like a, a split pea, uh, but she added squash and eggplant and moringa and some coconut milk. And I don't know what she spiced it with. She brought me a bowl of it, and it was delicious. So uh, no, Pam, they weren't uh, acorn. They're not. They are not acorn squash. Fed fast, Stacy. I can taste tacos all day. I bet you could, Stacy. Um, Van Turner. Uh, damn, another ad advert. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> so Mark has gotten uh, his YouTube premium, so he doesn't have to put up with it anymore. Well, let's look at the poll here. So the question was, is the dimwit dead? Uh, yes, 42%. No, 58%. I don't know. That's so everyone's kind of on the, on the fence. Um, I'm leaning towards the yes group. Because uh, look, uh, YouTube was like his heroin. And I couldn't see him. Uh, stopping of his own volition.
you know, maybe I'll do a poll on the news that I'm going to drop on you guys. Yeah, because I, I wouldn't know how to word it. So I, I did kind of leave a teaser in the beginning saying that there was going to be some um, some news. And um, so here it is. I uh, Look, I enjoy doing live streams. Um, really, I do. And this might this might kill uh, the whole live stream thing. And if it does, then it does. Um, you know, for, I think I've had, I think I've had memberships for, I don't know, I can't really remember. I think almost three years now. And, you know, in, in YouTube, uh, they suggest perks, um, you know, things to give members and the perks that I had put up were, well, they're out of date and, um, you know, I could never really think of um, something to reward those who became members uh, that, you know, was worth a crap. And um, so uh, what I've uh, decided to do, it's going to be better for some, a deal breaker probably for some, um, and, and like I said, it, it may uh, quickly lead to uh, there being no more live stream. Uh, but what I'm going to do, and I, I decided to do this live stream tonight uh, so that those who are interested can prepare uh, the live streams moving forward. Now, I'm only going to be doing uh, Sunday live stream. The usual Sunday morning live stream. Uh, but uh, there's two things. They're going to be members only uh, for those who uh, have a membership in any level. It doesn't matter what level it is. Uh, but they're going to be unmonetized. I'm not going to monetize them, so there's not going to be any ads uh, on those live streams. Um, but uh, to participate, and I don't know if you can watch it later without a membership or not. I don't. I don't know. Uh, but participation is is going to be for those uh, with a with a, a membership, and I know some of you, uh, you, you just you know um, aren't going to do it, and some of you already are members. Um, that's going to be the that's going to be the perk uh, is uh, you get to participate in live streams. Uh, so this this live stream is going to be the last one that everyone uh, and everyone is more than welcome uh, to participate. Pat Mills, I sent acorn squash to the young lady I sponsor, and they got out of control and looked a bit uh, like those you harvested. If I send a, a second kind of seed. What is the easiest crop to grow there? Uh, in all honesty, Pam, the easiest crops to grow here are the native ones. Uh, I've tried so many quote unquote Western seeds. You know, it's a combination of factors. It's soil. It's uh, a different insect load. Uh, it's a different climate. Uh, there's so many uh, variables. It's a lack of bees for the for pollination. It's just a lot of things. Um, tomatoes, the local varieties, do reasonably well as, until the blight gets them and kills them. Uh, tomatoes, for the most part, are self-pollinating. Uh, 
they have a little bit harder time in this high humidity, um, but you don't have to worry about uh, bees. Things like squash, like zucchini, like crookneck, things like that, they absolutely require a uh, honeybee to uh, uh, fertilize the flower. Um, any kind, so uh, don't don't send squash seed. Any kind of fruit tree that requ that requires a dormant season, like a, like a cold period, like uh, say cherries, apricots, peaches, uh, plums, apples, any any of those things that require a you know that that lose all their seeds or <laughs> that lose all their leaves in the winter time those kinds of trees because they're dormant at that time uh, those kind of, of trees will never fruit here uh, because they don't get that they don't get that rest period to build up for uh, the spring uh now, Scotty Brown did send me, he brought uh, with him some squash seeds, which we planted, and we've harvested a few squash, a bit less than the seeds that we get here. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say, Pam, is ask them what kind of seeds they want that they can get locally and just send them the money and they can get them here. Uh, and it's it's it, it's a, that's only half of it is the is what is viable here what will produce the other half of it is is that I've had I've had I've sent seeds here myself I've had other people send seeds here and it's 50 50 whether or not they'll germinate at all and it's of that 50 percent that will germinate about 10% will produce like they did in the state. So you're 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 down to like 5%. Uh, I don't know if they I don't know if they it's because they're radiated uh, at the port well, when they scan them. I, I don't know. But uh, the best thing to do, Pam, in my opinion, is, and seeds aren't expensive here. You can get a little packet of seeds. Uh, at the local agrivit, they sell the 15 or 20 most popular seeds here, uh, maybe even 25 different kinds. Cucumber and playa, tomatoes, peppers, bell peppers, uh, corn, squash, all kind of, what, all the stuff that you would need for a little home garden. Uh, they sell at almost every agrivit here for anywhere between 59 and 120 pesos. So any, anywhere between like a dollar and two dollars, you can get a little packet of seeds, which and a small packet of seeds for a family will uh, keep them uh, in whatever it is they're growing. So um, you don't have that shipping cost. It's easy peasy. That would be what I would recommend. You know, I used to, I used to be, for, I used to be first in line with my hand up. Hey guys, send me seeds. Would love them. Would love to try it. Would love to experiment. Well, I did all that trying and experiment, experimenting, and it just doesn't work out. Uh, let's see where we at here. Uh, da, 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 da. Corn is also an easy crop to grow here, but just one more little thing on, on Pam's question there. Uh, corn requires fertilizer. There ain't no way around it. Corn is a high nitrogen feeder. And if you don't fertilize them, at least with a with a 14 14 14 or 20 20 20 at least that and preferably like a 35 0 0 which is all nitrogen uh, they won't 
produce worth a crap. You'll get little ears. If they if they produce ears at all, you, they'll be this big. Um, so corn does well here, um, but it it requires a, a pretty good dose of fertilizer, and um, at that point, um, when it's fertilizing itself, because corn is another one that doesn't need. Um, pollination when it's pollinating itself uh, they're self-pollinating every little hair that you see on a on an ear of corn there's it's corresponding to a kernel of corn um one's the stamen and one is the i forget i'm old um and the uh, i hate it when my brain doesn't work um the the pollen, that little seedy looking tassel thing up above the ears on the top of the plant, um, that's the, I forget. One's the pistil, one's the stamen. Uh, one's the male, one's the female. But whatever it is, uh, that it rains down from that little tassel on the top down onto the corn and that fertilizes it. If it's a heavy rain or very heavy uh, humidity, that won't happen. So it takes, basically, it takes hand watering. Because it's hard, if you do it in the rainy season, you know, the luck of the Irish, it's going to rain when you don't want it to rain, when it should be pollinating. Um, that's another one that does well. Anyway, back on to uh, other stuff here. And Turner, Stacy, one of the thing I miss is a Slotsky sandwich. I don't even know what that is, man. Is that like a is that like a Subway but better? Paul T. Uh, then we had an appointment with the Grim we with the Grim Reaper. Uh, it's the Grim Reaper versus uh, the Grim the Grim Kitty Reaper. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we have a troll in here. Uh, I think Stacy's already taken care of him. Uh, Pam Hiltz, yes, some live streams that require membership. Uh, post them for all to see later. How do you get a membership? What button or button do I push? Um, I, as far as I know, you have to go to the home page, which is like the, the main channel page. And there will be a little icon that says join. And you just hit that. And I, you know, it's different prices for different countries. In the Philippines, if you're in the Philippines, it's $2 a month for the, the cheapest one. And I think in the United States, it's $4.99 a month. And I think, I can't remember exactly. Um, Mark P. I hit the join button. Pam Hiltz, uh, when, where is the join button looking? Yeah, it's on the home page, Pam. So you'll, you're either going to have to open up another window and, and go to the, go to the foreigner farming in the Philippines, my channel, and, uh, it'll be there. And turn to close the live chat and look. Uh, Mark P. Beside the subscribe, Paul T. Some member only live streams allow anyone to view the chat. Uh, gifting membership is a thing too. Yeah, Carla, God bless her, um, uh, and Doc as well. Um, we're really good about gifting uh, memberships. The only thing with gifting memberships, as I understand it, is that you can't pick who you're gifting it to. It's just a hundred or five or 
50 random uh, subscribers, I guess, uh, that the membership goes to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I must have been slow. I was slow on the draw there. I was too busy talking, I guess, Stacy. Um, Stacy hid the, the ugly taco man, Stacy. <laughs> what was he saying? That says I can view deleted message. Let me see. Oh, yeah, here we go. I don't know another uh, another retarded troll. It's not all caps, so uh, you know it's not the demo. <laughs> Gary Allen is my guess. Well, Google-eyed Gary. Shrek's cousin, I call him. Chronic Keeper Mike. Uh, hello, I'm 52 minutes late. Well, you, you haven't missed, missed really much. Uh, Van Turner. Slosky's are killer. Look on Google. Three different sizes, plus they make with different kinds of buns and meats, but and... But an original original is killer. You know, I I have to admit that I enjoyed Subway sandwiches. Um, I don't know how many five dollar footlongs I ate in my life, but a lot of them. Um, and you you didn't make them yourselves yourself, but you could ask them to make them a certain way, and they always did. And if it was something a little bit crazy, I you know I tip them a little bit. Um, uh, chicken or no uh, turkey on sourdough was my favorite with lots of pickles lots of mayonnaise a little bit of tomato a bunch of those Greek peppers on it a um, bunch of salt pepper vinegar all that stuff Van Turner hey keeper So, Mike, what's new and interesting? <coughs> so, look, guys, on the new uh, members only uh, live streams. Look, like I said, it, it might it might be the death knell of the live streams. Um, because, you know, if I don't get five or ten participants, um, you know, I, I'm not going to just, uh, you know, uh, if I'm the only. And I, and I might, maybe I'll hit up old Stacy to try to help me figure out how to do StreamYards. Um, I've never even tried StreamYard. I've never tried to go on someone who's doing StreamYard. Because, uh, again, I don't think my internet connection is good enough uh, to do stream yards. I don't know what what the bandwidth requirements are, but you guys know from years of watching the live streams that the bandwidth here is not great. And, you know, to me, because it's not just what I know about StreamYards, it's not just me, uh, but you can have two, three, four, five, six other people uh, also on the same feed. And I just, you know, I don't know. I, I might give I might give StreamYards a try, um, but I, I don't know. No, no promises on that. And yeah, and again, they're going to be on the usual time on Sundays, um, uh, probably 8 a.m. Uh, I used to do them at 9, 
and then I started doing them at like seven and then seven thirty. you know, uh, I don't like doing them at nine because it takes up too much of my day. Um, so probably at eight, eight AM will be the start times. Carla D, we were just talking about you, Carla. Uh, Mark, you'll be there already. Uh, <laughs> Carla, we were just talking about you on this exact subject. Um, Carla D gifted five at Foreigner Farming in the Philippines memberships. Two, let's see who the who the lucky winners are. JK67, I don't recognize that one. Uh, KB, yes, uh, uh, recognize her. Angie Durbin, that must be from a long time ago. Uh, don't recognize that one. Cowboy Dave, I do. Uh, William Hammock, a long time ago. Crazy Horse Grifter. Uh, how is Thor doing now that Gray is gone? I'll be I'll bet he is missing her a lot. He is. You know, I feel bad for Thor. I, I actually took him on two walks today. Because he he's quiet now. Maybe he's, you know, getting used to it. He basically howled all night last night and half the day today. I just feel so bad for him. I know he's lonesome. He's not used to being by himself. And um, you know. Spent a lot of time with him this morning. Took him for an afternoon walk. Uh, he's just sad. Well, he's not. I, I don't think he's so much sad as that he's just lonesome. He was just all over me uh, when you know both times. He's just a lonesome. He. I, I was even thinking today, which one of these other dogs could I put in with him? Or and I've been racking my brain. You know, Thor, look, Thor is a big dog. He's a, he's a, he's large even for a German Shepherd. He's a big dog. Um, Filipinos are by and large scared to death of dogs in the first place. And especially big ones, even Buddy. And, you know, Thor is probably half again Buddy's size. And Buddy's a big dog. He's a Labrador cross. They're scared to death of Buddy. So, I was just now he's howling again. I can hear him. Um, I can't let I can't let Thor run free, um, because he would he would scare the wrong Filipino and they and they would shoot him. Um, he he would he would scare all of them and and there's a big chance he could scare the wrong one. So the only other possibility is if I built. Uh, uh, a fence all the way around like the house here not around the whole property but just around the house and uh, slowly introduce him to the other dog so there's no uh, big fights and that way he can at least run around that much um, look any dog you know here's what I was thinking well maybe put another dog with him in the kennel any dog that I put with him well, that's going to be like a like a punishment to them because they're used to going around as they please. So I would be taking a dog that's used to his freedom and basically caging it. And I'm just, you know, I'm not, you know, why why make one dog suffer so that another one suffers a bit less? So that's where I'm at uh, on old Thor. But I, I feel for him. I feel bad for him. Um, where are we at here? Uh, Carla D, I love you. Well, thank you, Carla. It's very much appreciated, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I know that everyone, uh, I don't know, has anyone, uh, it's a long shot, has anyone here ever been gifted a membership? And if so, were you notified? Um, Stacy passing on GD computer class. Uh, 
blind <laughs> leading the blind. Uh, well, yeah, you know, but, but here's the scary part, Van. Uh, Stacy knows more about it than I do. Uh, Carla D helps my friends and uh, the channel. Yes, it does. So, Carla, you got here late to the game uh, after I'd already uh, said uh, the uh, won't affect you, Carla. But just so you know, uh, I'm beginning this next Sunday. I'm going to re restrict live streams to members only uh, because, as I as I said, I. For years, I've been trying to come up with a decent perk uh, for those enough, kind enough, for those kind enough to uh, take out a membership on it on the channel. I was just never able to come up with anything. So now I have. So it's going to be uh, uh, members only for the live streams. I don't. Really, they might only last two or three weeks if I don't get you know a decent amount of people. Um, showing up to the live streams and I'll just stop them. Uh, just, that's just it. Uh, Stacy, Brian, I will try and do a video on how to get on StreamYard. Uh, you will get more people because you can actually talk to them. Uh, but the whole internet is terrible. I've never even looked at it, Stacy. So are there, do they, before you download, install it, whatever you got to do, do they give you uh, requirements for internet speed or bandwidth or computer speed or any, any of that? Brother D, my great Dane is four months. Wow. So how big is a four-month-old Great Dane? Carla D. Awesome, Sir Brian. Never leaving. Well, I appreciate that, Carla. Huge. <clears throat> Have you? How much does he weigh? I'm just curious. Is it a male, female, and how much does it weigh at four months? Never had a Great Dane. I had a lot of dogs. I love dogs, uh, but never had a Great Dane. <laughs> buddy. Nothing to be stirred up about, buddy. Or you're driving by on a motorcycle. Male, 57 pounds yesterday. Wow, a four-month-old puppy weighing 57 pounds. So I would guess that when he gets full-grown, he's going to be 150 pounds or so, somewhere in there, or more. I don't know. Um, you know, when I uh, lifted Gray, uh, she was heavy. I'm thinking close to 100 pounds. And Thor, even though Thor is a bit uh, taller than Gray was, he's not quite, you know, Gray was a fat old lady. Uh, he, Thor, and he's gained about 15 pounds since I got him. So Thor probably weighs a good 80, 85 pounds. Carla D, his dad is 140. Wow. <laughs> ben Turner, I had a St. Bernard, St. Bernard, and he was huge. You know, I didn't even, I thought when I first saw them, I thought it was an Airedale. But the biggest dog that I've ever seen in, in person uh was a uh, irish wolfhound they were on they were on my route 
when I first began my ice cream truck business in Paradise, California. And, and had a pair of them. Because I, I, I guess she said that uh, you can't have just one Irish wolfhound. Uh, that they they get mean and and introverted and because they're they're they were bred to hunt wolves in packs uh, of two uh, in pairs. They were they were bred to hunt packs of wolves in pairs, and you almost always have to have them in a pair. And uh, I think she said that the female weighed 120, and she hadn't had the male weighed in a long time and wasn't really sure. How much he weighed. They were like, imagine an Airedale, but like double size, or a, or the biggest poodle you've ever seen in your life. Those dogs were so they looked like a. I don't know they were shaped kind of like a greyhound maybe, but just like a like a, a greyhound on steroids, with long kinky hair, straight, stringyish kinky hair. Huge heads. They were beautiful animals. Um, but bigger than any Great Dane I'd ever seen. Maybe not weight-wise, but height. They were, at length, they were huge dogs. Annie on MacTan. Um, I hadn't realized you were live, streaming on Wednesday evenings. Um, yeah, this is going to be the last Wednesday evening uh, stream, Andy. Um, it's, a <coughs> <coughs> it's amazing that I haven't had any problems this evening with the Internet. I think the last three that I did, huge problems. Um, you know, go figure. Who, who, who knows? Um, but this is, I'm, I'm going to... Uh, just do Sunday, uh, Sunday only live streams at probably eight in the morning, and um, uh, they're going to be members only. How's things, Andy? Carla D, uh, my little bro had an Irish Wolfhound. OMG, I love that dog. He was a sweetheart. He just had one. I don't have a lot of experience with Irish wolfhounds. That owner told me you always had to have them in pairs because they uh, didn't do well by themselves. So as you know, Brian, it almost like YouTube. Uh, I'm sure I'm. I'm sure it will take a little more bandwidth, but I wasn't asked. Well, a little more bandwidth could be the deal could be the deal breaker there, Stacy. I mean, you know, I guess it wouldn't hurt to try. Carla D, do you know that Irish Wolfhound and Mastiff? Um a Mastiff is probably the heaviest dog I've ever seen. Um, a customer for a while lived in a uh, in a motel where they allowed him to keep his his Mastiff with him. And uh, well, it turns out he died. The, the dog died like six months later, and the and the owner knew he was he was only uh, seven years old. Uh, but he said that's pretty much it for a mastiff. They just get, uh, they don't live long because they're just so huge. Uh, and that mastiff weighed 230 pounds. It was a huge dog. The head on that dog was this wide. I'm not kidding. I'm not exaggerating. It was this wide. It was like a bear. But it was. I don't know. It's like it was sleepy. I don't know. I, I, to me, it just seemed like it, it, 
you'd have to set a bomb underneath that dog to get it to move. Uh, it would get up for an ice cream sandwich, but um, it wasn't uh, in any kind of a hurry. Uh, uh, you know, an Irish wolfhound and mastiff is a great dame. I, I, I did not know. I did not know that. But Great Danes are like smooth hair, right? They're like, you know, they're like a, I don't know, like a, a lab or a Jack Russell or anything. They have short, smooth hair. And the Irish wolfhounds that I'm familiar with have that long, stringy um, hair. I don't see how even... Uh, that a half mix that that would be bred out. Carly, that is how Germany created the Great Dane. I'll take your word for it, Carla. It's just, I guess, it's just one of those things in nature. Any of Mac and Irish wolfhounds are bred for hunting, uh, for wolf hunting, and indeed they are. Um, and you know that that uh, I mean they're they're bred for speed. You can tell that by looking at them that they just look like a weird ass um, uh, greyhound, but they kind of have that greyhoundish shape. Um, but they're just they're huge. They're Huge heads and jaws, and they're so big, they're just and they're powerful. Um, Carla D., I had a St. Bernard and a Great Dane uh, at 18 crossed for hunting. Uh, uh, when they cut their ears, uh, to go through brush. So they cut their ears like a, I don't know, like a, a uh, Doberman. And I got to say, I, I don't, you know, I know St. Bernard's are, you know, they're big, pretty hardy dogs, but I would not expect them to be uh, any kind of a distance runner. Uh, and if you're using them for hunting, they gotta they gotta be able to chase down whatever they're after. Now the Great Dane, I could see I could see running something down, but a Saint Bernard, uh, I don't know. So anyway, guys, uh, I think I'm gonna end this one up. That was the news. Um, uh, thought I'd give you. A, I don't know, a four-day heads up, uh, live stream, uh, Sunday morning at 8 o'clock, at 8 o'clock, at 8 a.m. Philippines time, whatever that is your time, I don't know, uh, but that that's the new uh, parameters, uh, membership only, any level, um, and that's how we're going to do it moving forward. We'll see how it goes. Uh, if we don't get enough participants, then there'll just be no more live streams, and that'll that'll free up my Sunday. Uh, Mark, uh, to see y'all. Take care. See you all on uh, Sunday. All righty then. So I'm uh, going to end this one up. Um, I'm sure there's some of you out there. Uh, who are who won't be up for the uh, uh, the, the whole mem membership route? Well, uh, thank you for uh, participating all these times and all this time. Uh, it's always appreciated, and the the interaction and the uh, uh, the back and forth was is always my favorite part of a live stream. So maybe I'll try the stream yards. I don't know. We'll give it a shot. Um, 
I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but for uh, those of you that uh, this is my last time seeing you, uh, thank you once again. Uh, take care. Be safe. Uh, no matter where you are or what you're doing, uh, give somebody a hug that you care about. We'll see you guys on Sunday. Bye-bye.